So basically, the Gemara introduces the, the introduction to this whole Gemara, which is a total digression, is we brought there about, we're talking about the width of a wall compared to the height of a wall, and we brought a godly covered by Yisach and Yisim in addition, the second base of English, you know, was greater than the first, and we tried to work out the, the height of the walls. From that, we went into... Um, into a uh, shul, the mikdash ma'at, and we spoke about the analogy to just demolish one shul before you build another. And we actually ruled that the halach is because we're worried about negligence. If you're going to break a shul down, and uh, you know, just demolish a shul, uh, even if you even if you have another place to dab, and the fact is you demolish the shul, the is a machlek is a there. If you have another shul, or me, just you have a place to dab, and when we are worried about demolishing, and now we want to know about the base of mikdash. How did Baba ben Buddha advise Hurdus to, to destroy the base of Migdash? And uh, when we didn't have any other base of Migdash, and when you're not allowed to, that was a question. And we answered that straight away. We answered that uh, 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 the monarch is very different because he cannot change his mind. Once he sets, he puts something into train, into motion, that's what happens. Or they actually saw that the base of Migdash was faltering, and that's why they rebuilt the base of Migdash. Interesting that Rashi, in the very bottom of the page, says, look in your Sifun. But in your Sifun's version of this very story, it says that, that Baba Buddha told him, first, build all the parts of the base of English you want, and then demolish the old parts. Exactly the opposite of Al-Gumari here. And Rashi here references to go look in your Sifun Ben-Gurion. And, um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, we had this story about, uh, we started to learn about Hurdus. And then Hurdus was an Ebed of Chashmanayim. He wanted to marry this, this girl from Chashmanayim. And the reason why he wanted to marry her, by the way, is he was a, an Ebed, according to the Al Gemara. He was an Ebed. And an Ebed, he was not set free. And uh, the only surviving uh, member was this young girl. And um, she didn't free him, so he was an Ebed. But if he marries her, that in itself is a form of freedom. And that's why he wanted to marry her. And then we we have the two opinions whether he he behaved as if he did. Anyway, so the, then the Gemara says so the, after he wiped out, unfortunately, many of the Tamil who opposed um, who opposed the, his leadership, Mekara he des, he decided to consult Baba Ben Buta. Interesting, case that points out that Hill was alive at that time and Ben Bebsera was alive at that time. Okay, Hill was still in bubble, but Ben Sarah was there. He chose Baba Mabuta to be his advisor. But what he did was so on the very top of the page, uh, very bottom of the page. So come the last line. Today's daf 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 daf. Come He went out. He went out, and he and he unfortunately killed. When it says cool, it means those are abonnen who opposed him. It wasn't everybody. Shavke le Bob and Buddha, he allowed Bob and Buddha to survive. The Mishkal Eternate to seek his advice. He put a crown that was made out of porcupine quills and he put it on, on his, uh, he was ruthless. Kurdus Herod the Great was ruthless. And he went and he put his crown on with these porcupine quills, which gouged out the eyes of Baba Buddha. Nakrinu le'ene, gouged his eyes, and, and unfortunately became blind. One day also, one day he sat before him, look, my master, hi, Abdu Bisha, this terrible slave, which is referring to Hurdus. My God, look what he did. Amalei, my Abalei, what do you want me to do? Amalei, now tell you, curse him. You're a rabbi, you can curse. Amalei, see, there's a pasik gam the madachi that even in your mind, melech al tekali, you shouldn't go ahead and curse a king. So it's not going to happen. Amalei, he said to him, king? I love melech, he's not a much of a king. Amalei, because he's an ebed, an ebed can't be a king, because it says, mekera v'chicha, you people say. Amalei, he's fine. The lehevi ashaba, he's not a king. He's just a wealthy person. And it says clearly in the Pasuk, in that very same Pasuk, and Shlomo Melech advises that in the inner recesses of your home, don't curse a rich man. So then he said, and furthermore, even if he's just a Nasi, it says in the Pasuk alternative, you shouldn't curse out your Nasi. Difficult to understand exactly if he cannot be a Melech because nor can he be a Nasi. Anyway, so who just responded? Amalei said, "But I said, my Amcha. That's all provided that this Nasi behaves like a yid, but this person is not behaving. But I love I said, my Amcha. He's not behaving properly." Amalei said, "But Bumbu just said, regardless, Mistafina Mine, I am scared of him." 
Amalei, so this person said to Bob and Buta, like in his dozzle, there's nobody here who'll go, the lame lay that will tell him. We're the only ones here. Amalei, he said in that very same passage where it says in your mind you shouldn't shouldn't curse someone, and or in your house you shouldn't curse someone, the passage concludes, Ki because the birds will relay and convey all these um, things that you say. But there are no secrets. There are no secrets. Word will get out. Amalei, as Benjamin Franklin Habel said, the best secret between three friends is if two of them are dead. Amalei said to him, We're starting it tomorrow. <laughs> it's Allah Habel. Amalei said, I know who. I am Hudus. And he have boy, and, and welcome back, Alex. He have boy, your diner. If I would have known the Zari Rabbanu Kulahai, if I would have known the Rabbanu was so careful, Loy have a I never would have killed them. Hashtana Maite Kante. By the way, we're talking about Hudus being an evidence, an opinion that uh, that Hudus actually was Antipater's son, and there's an opinion that he was Antipater's son that um, Antipater married Mariam. Who is the daughter of Hercules? Others yeah. say that Hur that that um, that Hurdus himself was one married Mariam, and then this girl in the story in the Gemara is Mariam, but he had kids with her, so couldn't really have been her. But uh, there was an opinion that he actually wasn't even an Evid. not like you know, yeah. not like Gemara based on. Yeah, Josephus says it has a whole history there. Antipa was the father, and Herod and his brothers. Herod was a Michiganer, not only yeah. you know he, he, had, he, he had, had five children desperate. with. That's absolute terrible. He killed his own kids for, for on a range of jealousy, and he killed yeah. her apparently on a range of jealousy as well. Exactly. So, yeah. So he wasn't exactly. the And the irony is, he's the one who, who rebuilds by Cheney. As we're learning right now. As we're learning right now. So he now had misgivings about what he did. Amalei, he said, "I know who asked me. You have a I don't know that the rabbis are so careful not to offend anyone. I have a I never would have killed him out." Tell me, what can I do to do tshuva? He had a moment of uh, sobriety. Now, who got it? This person talking about himself in third person. Amalei, so Baba Buddha said, who cover you think with the light of the world. You see what it says, Kinei mitzvah teirah, that teirah and, and mitzvah is considered you know, fire and, and light and so on, a candle and light. Is ye lichliyasi b'yashalaylam. You should go out there and repair the light of the world. You see what it says, the Naru El of Kola going, all the nations of the world will go and scream to the base of English. And and therefore, you should uh, <coughs> fix it up. Who see me English? You blinded the eyes of the world. The leaders of the community are called the eyes, the eyes of the uh, of the community. Um there were once the, the two two uh Bachrim, who were on the way to uh, to to uh, go to the Rebbe Rashab, and they stopped in the um, well, the previous Rav Chava, I can't remember, and they stopped in the Rav Chava's house while they were traveling, and the Rav Chava asked them, you know, why are you going, taking off time, whatever, to go visit your Rebbe, and they said to him, no, you tell us. So he said, in the Gemara, you'll always find that leaders of community are called Eine Ha'eda. Why aren't they called Rosh Ha'eda? The head of the community, why called Eini Ha'eda? So he said, you know why? Because a real leader is not someone who's smart than everyone else. It's somebody who looks out for everyone else. He's concerned about every one of his Talmidim, Hasidim, and that's why the Gemara always referred to them as Eini Ha'eda, the eyes of the community. Anyway, very, since, very nice. since you wiped out the um, these Rabbonim, Yelech Lisa asked me, go ahead and repair the eyes of the world, the Chsiv. And what are, we, what are we referring to there? It says in the Pasik, Hinani Mechalel Es Migdoshi, I am going to destroy the Mesmidosh, Goin Uschem, the pride of your strength, Mechamede Nechem, the desire of your eyes. So it refers to the Mesmidosh as eyes, and therefore repair that. And we had more before that the Mesmidosh, according to one answer, more, desperately needed repairs. According to the second answer, did not, he just wanted to beautify it. Omele Mistafina Malchusa. So now Hurdu said, I'm worried about the Roman, the Roman government. Amalei, so he said he advised him as follows: send send some agents. The lazel shasa, make sure it takes about a year to travel from Israel to Rome. The shasa, hang around in Rome for a year, and then the shasa, whatever structures they get, it should take him a year to travel back. So it's three years from beginning to end. 
Ad hochi lochi sasilei uban yilein. Meantime, that gives us enough time. That in our Gemara's version, first they broke the base of English, and then they built it. The Rameh writes that what actually happened was they, they did that, and for a couple of years, they did not bring any carbonus at all. Not the carbon tummy, not the carbonus, and others have a big problem with that. How could Bob and Mutter stop you know, advise um, the Hood, especially according to the second answer, that is just to enhance the base of English. How can you advise him to shut it down to make it beautiful? And meanwhile, there's no cabanas. And they have a hard time understanding what actually happened. Anyway, um, according to Rameh. And, and not everyone agrees with that either. Charles uh, Hulay, anyway, so the Roman government, they were they were wise, they were wise enough, and they said, Im tarta, if you didn't demolish the base of English yet, I'll just don't demolish. Im Tarta, if you did demolish it, but you didn't build a new one, you didn't construct it yet, I'll keep it, don't construct it. Im Tarta over Nisa. But if you destroyed it and you rebuilt it, Avdi Bisha, you naughty Evid, uh, you know, the spiritual Evid, Bosa the Avdi, Ms. Malkin, after you did something, you ask us for advice. Im Zayancha Allah, even though you feel, uh, you know, filled with hubris because you have soldiers and you have weapons, Sivri Khan, we know your history, we know who you really are. You are not a king, nor are you the son of a king. You have no royal blood flowing through your own, uh, through your veins. You are a despicable um, um, Evid, a disgraced Evid. My Raka, what kind of word is Raka? Malchus. Raka means um, Malchus, royalty. We have an apostate where it says, Anoichi hayoim rach umashuach melech. Interesting. So the Roman Empire sent a letter to in Hebrew, and we're trying to understand this, the origin of the word that the Romans used to uh, allude to royalty. Yeah, Steinzal says that it's from Latin, rex, meaning royalty in, in Latin. Could be. But why would they use Latin when they were Romans? Well, the Latin was the language of the Rome. It was okay. It was the language everywhere. Okay. The Ibai say or, Mahacha. From the, I know the Rach means um, Rach means uh, what about royalty? Because it says the pasuk, "But you call the father Avrech to Yosef." They called him Avrech, and and that was the royalty. So it, it, um, it predates Latin. Amri, we say, "Misha loy ra binyan hurdas lo binyan abiyama." Anybody did not see the building that the hurdas built? Never saw a beautiful built edifice in their lifetime. The my banya, what made it so special? Omar Rabbah, Rabbah said, He had green marble and white marble. Or you could have many, three colors. Kuchla had blue, shisha, and green, and white. Afik, Safa, Ba'ayo, Safa. He went in, one row, and one row went out. So it was a row in, a row out. The purpose was, it was by chance, because the purpose was to sort of have these um, cavities there, and we'll fill it with cement to make the wall smooth. And straight. So I will let me show you a And he thought he'll fill it not with cement, but with gold plated. Only the Rabbana Shavke. You know what? Leave it the way it is, that natural color. The Hachi Shapit Fe, much nicer. The Mezeki Idvasa the Yama looks like waves. The blue, the green, the white looks like waves going in and out. So leave it that way. Says the Gemara, Boba Barbutta, Hechi Oven Hachi. How did Boba Barbutta actually advise who does how to do true? Why was Daniel punished? Because he advised He gave advice to Muchanetzer how he can remedy what he did. He destroyed the base of Migdash. He wanted to do tshuva, so he gave him advice on how to do that. Because it says in the passage by Daniel, it says, Lahain Malka to the king, Malki Yishapralach, I think will be good for you. Your sins. That you committed with to by being generous and charitable and giving the Jews money and helping out the poor, you will be redeemed. And your sins and your iniquities, the Mechan Anian will be forgiven and we Michael there by giving much to Dr. And you will live, you'll have a longer kingdom. And it says actually later on that Koila Mota Al Muchanet Samalka that everything happened from Alchoxi, but it says it was delayed by 12 months. So because Daniel suggested or advised Muchanetza to Tshuva, he delayed the punishment of Muchanetza by 12 months. So how did Bob and Buta advise Hurdus, who's a Russian? Says the Gemara, you can't compare Hurdus, even though he's a Russian, you cannot compare Hurdus to the Muchanetza. Why is that? He buys him a shiny avdu, the chai b'mitzis. 
But at the end of the day, our Eved is Chayv and Mitzvahs as well. So therefore, he was permitted to tell him how to do tshuva. Or we needed a base of meter. Dila Malchus like Miss Pana. Sorry? Yeah. Nothing. Oh. Well, um shiny base of maybe is different. The E Lai Malchus Lai Mizbani. If it not had been for the royal um if it wouldn't have been for a king getting involved, never would we be able to build the base of Middash in his grand Way the way it was happened. So therefore, if Bubba Buddha didn't do it to save um to save um who does he did it for Klaw Yisrael? Says the of Daniel Minola the Onish, how do you talk about Daniel was punished? Elaima is it because in Megillus Esther it says, but Tikra Esther La Hasach. Esther called Hasach and Omar Rab and Rab said that Hasach is a Daniel. The Hasach is actually Daniel. So honey, um so, so now suddenly he became like a servant. The word has the origin of the word is they cut him down from his position that he was originally. He's called Hatoch from the word that everything that happens has to be passed through him. Then, Michael, what was, his, what was Daniel's punishment? That he was thrown into the lion's, the lion's den. Basically, the message actually that he would that later on in the Gila you don't find Hasach anymore because he was killed uh, by by Achashvedish. So um, he was punished, even though this is many years later. So he did live you know, a longer life. Okay. Yeah, Bubba Back. Ben Buddha is apparently a Talmud of Shammai. And Shammai was in charge of the Sanhedrin when they were built against Herod. So I say it again, or what? Bubba Ben Buddha is apparently a Talmud of Shammai. Yes, he was. And Shammai was in charge of the Sanhedrin when the, Sin, when the Sanhedrin was giving Herod a terror, you know, rebelling against him and not, um, you know, acknowledging his um, kingship. So that's how they're connected. Hmm. Maybe, but Jesus says that most people, do, um, that many Rabbana still were alive. It's just that. Yeah, no, he didn't kill all of them. Yeah, but, yeah. So he didn't yeah. consult Shammai. He didn't consult any of the ones who were all right. He just wanted Baba the Buddhas. Yeah, I think. Um, <clears throat> so interesting. But Hillel did not come to Baba for another three years, and so Shammai was well and truly still around yeah. for a number of years after that. So obviously, Baba Buddha must have stood out as a, a very um, a, 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 a clever and astute advisor in worldly things. So think we're going to go back now to our Mishnah. So our Mishnah discussed, we had a huts or a courtyard, we have a garden, and we have a, uh, a valley. And we discussed, and you had yesterday at our base, the whole discussion is about building a partition by a huts, perhaps because Hezek Riyash may Hezek, because that you invading my privacy, and whether that's because it's us or whether that's because it's a monetary um, Hezek, either way, whatever the different opinions. But um, there's a loss, and that's why you need a wall there. A gina, if you follow that line of thought, a garden also is worried about Hezekiah. And in the valley, less so, because you're not really there doing any private things. But so therefore, in in the excuse me, our Mishnah says that in a garden, it starts off saying in a garden, if the meaning is to put to build a wall. And um, and by a by a bika, it says, and if the meaning is not to build, you don't have to build. The other way of learning it is. That Hezek, it's not a Hezek, but we agreed to build that partition brick gardens. So now the Gemara wants to understand the contrast between a garden and a valley. We had in the Gemara the base of the base that a garden actually is more serious than um, because you have a thing called Ayin Hara. And the big machlek is in the Shainim, which, where is the Hezek greater? In a, in a garden or in a Chatzim? And uh, according to the opinion that Hezek Ria Loish Mehezek, certainly a garden is more serious than a chatzah because a chatzah we need to procure each other's agreement before we build the wall. But by a garden, also the Amba, the Adam Lama, the Kamasa, you're not standing and look at the Sadaq and look at the, the gate of your friend. So there we force you to build the wall. So a garden, the Hezek is far more serious. But if you learn Hezek Ria Shmei Hezek, then there's a big argument at the end of the day. So which is more serious, a garden or a chatzah? And there's enough minutes for halacha, but maybe we'll come to as we go through the Okay. Okay. Um, says the Gemara now. Let's understand the Mishnah. First of all, it says the Mishnah, Hakal Kiminig Amadina. After the Mishnah starts off, Mokshinogu, it tells you the different kind of walls, and the, Gemara, and the Mishnah concludes, Hakal Kiminig Amadina. Lasuyimai, what's it coming to add? We already went, we already described the different kind of walls. Lasuyay 
Asra the Nihigi Buhutsu Dafri. The meaning is not to build any of those walls, but rather just to build twigs and with palm branches going through them. If that's what the meaning is, then so be it. That is what the meaning is. <clears throat> okay. So um and, and then there's a machlek to showing you what happened the meaning is to have a lesser wall than that, or what happened the meaning is not to have a wall at all. What's it then then? Do we say Hakol Kiminigam and then the very so some of the say the very fact that Gemara doesn't say that that um, you know if the minig is not to build the wall you follow that means that there's something called a minig shlus or a minig ra that bad men hug him not just because people are doing something doesn't mean you have to follow it has to it has to make sense and has to be grounded so you have to have some kind of a wall but we can go we don't need a stone wall necessarily or a brick wall you can go down you know to a hutzah v'daf. Others disagree. Rabbi Yehuda disagrees. So, if the wall collapses, the wall belongs to both. Because the din is that they both have to build together, the wall belongs to both, and the wall collapses. The obvious question is, and the din, let's say, would not be to both have to build the wall together. You have two. Uh, you have a courtyard. You have two people going sharing the courtyard, and you see a wall collapse with stones everywhere. And, and let's say the din was you can't force each other to build a wall. What would you do? And each one said that I was involved in this. So obviously, you'll split it since we don't know. Well, whose wall it is, we're going to say divide it. So what's the Gemara's question here? Says the Gemara. Shit, there's no, isn't that obvious? No, you know, tzich, uh, you know what we're talking about? The nofel of the Chabnai. It fell into one of their, only the, all the stones fell onto one side. So we would have thought that he can claim that it's his. Or he made the Panino Chad or one of them actually pulled it to his side. That was, you know, by the time we got involved, we already saw the stones on one side. So Mao, they would have thought, and heavy either, but the Chabnai. I would have thought the other person has to produce proof that they that they were, they were involved. And that's why the mission says, Kamash Walam, because the halacha says they both have to build a wall, we don't believe what either person says. We say that what? That the wall belongs to both. Even though the guy has a meager, he could have said, I am, um, he said, I built a wall myself. He could have said, we built it together, but I bought the stones from you. But all right, it's still sitting in my courtyard. So we so now we say that Migli is against the Chazaka. The Chazaka tells us that they both built it together because that is the law. Now, even though we already learned in Marba at the very end, that Shutfin the Kapte Hadadi, that people don't really care. And if you put your things in my side of the yard, who cares? Therefore, the fact that it's sitting on one side proves nothing. So the Rashaim explained, but here we're talking about it remained there for a very long time. Shutfin don't mind, you keep a day, a few days, but it was there for a very long time. That's grounds to tell us that maybe it does belong to that other partner. But that's why the commission says, but because the law states clearly they both have to share together, we don't believe the other part. And Wouldn't if it could just be on the Vonim, not on the Mokhim? The Mokhim for sure. The Mokhim is uh, for sure we split. Yeah. But if um, the Vonim is really the question. Exactly. Yeah. Says the Gemara, there's actually a Machlik is a Shining. Well, let's say. When two people have a courtyard, and you know they 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 decide to split the courtyard, either decide or I can force you whatever it is, we split the courtyard, and then we build a wall. The the section of the courtyard that's underneath that wall, are we still should fit in that little in that part of the land, or half of the you know, the half the wall that's on my side is on my side of the land, and half the wall on your side on your side of the land. And the question is, am I kind of the wall because it's in my chaser, or do we say that because we are partners in that section? I'm not cutting the wall because it's in my chutz. I'm cutting the wall because I paid for it. Yeah. If I paid for it. And I called my didn't pay for it. I'm not cutting it. Which you'll see in the mission of Dalot. And I pay. In the next further Gemara. Says the Gemara. Um, but now we understand. We have a little trouble here. The next part of the mission where you draw a contrast between a garden and a vat. The garden. The Mishnah says a garden. If the meaning is to, to put a wall there, you put a wall there. It sounds like. How good for cash. We have a problem here. Amrit, you say the chain beginner, mokim shenogu lit the chayven. I said, sounds like by a gina garden. The only time you have to build this partition is if that's the custom. That's the the, the custom in that particular region. Hostama, when there's no custom, then I'm a chayven. I say you don't have to build a wall. Aim a sefer. Read the next part of the Mishnah. Avobika. Now, a valley, there's even less reason to build a wall. See, the garden is right in front of your house. You're always there. You, you know, there's constant invasion of privacy or Ayn Hara. A, a valley, you know, they, you have these fields there. They, you know, they grow for one or two months a year, the season, that's it. So you, you know, nobody really is there. Nobody's building about. So a bika has far less reason to build a partition. And yet the Mishnah says, bika, 
If Mokim Shinogu Shaloi Liga, if the meaning is not to build a wall, they don't have to. It sounds like Hosh but there's no meaning either way. Doesn't make sense. Hash term stam gina when it comes to an ordinary garden, I'm going to say Uloi, you don't have to build a wall. Stam gina, in other words, a stam, and there's no meaning either way. You don't have to, it's only if the meaning is to build. Stam become a boy. So when you have a valley and there's no meaning either way, you tell me I have to build a wall, doesn't make sense. Rabbiya comes along and says his first shot. Oh Rabbi, how do you come? This is how you read the mission. The chain stam gina, full stop. A stam gina has the same din that why that if there that you have to build a wall. And then when it says Mokim Shinogu, that's starting to talk about the valley and goes as follows. And the rest of the mission is about the valley. The minig is to put a fence where the pika in the valley. We're not talking about the garden anymore. Put a full stop after the word Vechem beginning. And now we're saying, So the minig is to build, then you chayev. And if it's not to, then you chayev. That's how Abayi reads it. Rabbi says it's very nice, but it doesn't fit into the words of the Mishnah. Why? In came my Avo. It says in the Mishnah, Mokim Shinogu Shalid the Mechayv. And I say, Avo, the Bika, if the Minigan, what do you mean Avo Bika? We talked already about the Bika. So therefore, obviously, until the words Avo, the Bika, we're still talking about the garden. So how are you going to have shot in the Mishnah? Elam Rav, Rav said, Hachi Tani, we have to fill in a few words in the Mishnah as follows. The Chain Stam Gina, an average garden, Stam Gina, a garden where there's no Minig one way or another, is just like the meaning is to, to put a fence there. But a stam bika, we have no meaning either way, is In other words, by a bika, the only time that you have to build a wall is when the meaning is to build a wall. By a garden, even if there's no meaning one way or another, you still have to build a wall. By a garden, the only time you can get out of it is if the meaning is not to build a wall. And this is one of the causes of the machlek is regarding a chotzer because it says the chain beginner sounds like it's the same thing. That means by a chotzer, the meaning in that city is not to build a wall, even though you're claiming hezegria, maybe you don't have to build a wall. That's the opinion of those Yashayim that say they don't have to. And others say no, a chotzer is far stricter than a than a than a gina, and therefore in a chotzer, even the meaning not to, you have to build a wall. You have to build a wall. And the uh, and and the perhaps the the, 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 the base of the argument is is it a question of Easter or is it a question of Mammon? What's the whole idea of Hezegria? Is Hezegria because you're causing me damage all the time? You're doing a very you're causing me damage. So we're worried about the Easter. Or is there a monetary damage because I cannot make full use of my courtyard? I, I have a house with a courtyard, I expect you to do all these extra things, and I don't have it. And the difference is as follows: by a Gina, it's a monetary thing. And uh, and what is it by a chutzah? If a chutzah is a monetary thing as well, well, just like Bagina, we see clearly here, the meaning is not to. That's, that means we're moichel each other. If the meaning of the place is we don't build a wall between gardens, that means we're all moichel. We bought the garden, you knew that we're not going to build a wall. So everyone is moichel, the same thing with a courtyard. If, if that When you bought the house and you share a courtyard, you know that people don't build walls there, so you're moichel. But if it's a question of iser, that is an avera you're committing all the time when you're invading my privacy, then you can't be moichel on an iser. And therefore, it doesn't matter what the meaning of the place is. It doesn't matter what happens by a garden, by a chutz, you have to build a wall. That's how we explain that argument of the Rishayim. Anyway, where it continues. Then uh, Ella, so what happens in a bika? You prefer to have a wall. You can't uh, coerce your, your uh, neighbor to do to join you. So what do you do? Ella, you if you want. You build the wall on your side. You build the wall, but how are you going to prove over time, years later, that the wall is actually totally yours? It's not on the boundary and really belongs to both of you. So you have to make some kind of a sign, a chazis. Now there's an argument, where do you place this? First of all, what the sign is, and where do you place it? Then you go, what am I chazis? What exactly is this chazis? Omar Abuna, Abuna says, Ach levar. The very top of the wall, you bend over the, let's say, the bricks, projecting outwards to the other property. And therefore, everyone knows that this wall was built by one person. Says the Gemara, why facing outwards to your neighbor? Make it facing your direction to show, pointing at yourself that I'm the one who built the wall. Says the Gemara, very simply, because we want to avoid um, not only crooks, but we don't give them incentive to be a, to be to be a crook. Um, how's that? Because if you're gonna, if if the way it is of pointing my direction, that guy, the neighbor can go ahead and in the middle of the night or whatever. I'm not in the middle of the night. It's, it's the other side of the wall. You can't even see. In, in the bikkur there, whatever, he'll go and they make uh, the top brick bent over uh, facing him. What's there to prevent him from cheating? Um, 
His friend will do the same thing. Milbar and Vaamri say the Diva Day. He'll do the same thing on the other side. He'll say, "Ha, huh, we sh- we're partners." Says the Gemara. Say that if you're worried about um, some people who are who are not who are dishonest. So what's the point? And if you make his thing outside, he'll cut it off. He'll shave it off. He'll shave it off. And Vaamri he'll claim the Diva Day. We both share together. The Gemara gives us a made the idea. When you shave it off, if you literally, when you made the brick, you made one brick, you know, with protruding, and you shave it off, people right away can see that's different than all the other bricks there, and it'll be too obvious. He won't do that. But I'll prevent some, somebody who's dishonest. Ikadamni, another version is, I'm going to have said, the other way around, he holds michvel lekan and by a bika you make it facing inwards. Says the Gemara v'nevet mubar, exactly the opposite for why don't you make it projecting outwards? Because guys, like, he'll cut it off. And according to this opinion, they say that you could somehow or another, guys, the the neighbor will cut it off, and maybe he can fix it up looking like it, this is how it always was. He'll go ahead and attach. If you have to attach something to the wall, he'll attach something to the wall, make it look like it was his on his side. He'll say, it's mine and yours. So we answer, if you make the brick afterwards, no, but he built it. The, the, the guy on one side who built the wall all by himself built the, initially, but they fashioned the brick. They made it facing outwards. If you go ahead and you add a piece to, you know, facing your side uh, next to the neighbor and claim, you right away see that this is not part of the brick. This was added on. And therefore, it's too obvious. Well, you have one problem. According to this version, you tell me if you, you build a piece projecting towards yourself, it says cruelly, it sounds like on the outside. And so Gemara says, Kashi, it's a problem, but doesn't disturb me. Doesn't disturb me. And why not? Trace explains, because you could learn, Mibachutz means not uh, outside facing outside the wall. Mibachutz means, um, 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 this right here. Mibachutz means outside of the wall. I don't care which direction it is, but outside of the wall. And therefore, the mission is the word Mibachutz still is suitable, even though it's facing to, to the one who actually owns the wall. You can still use the word Mibachutz. Because it means it's a reference not to the person who built it, but to the wall itself. It's outside of the wall. You have something projecting out, outwards. And yeah, that's one view. That chazid is the brick itself faces outwards. The Yechon says that nishaya ba'amasa, what you do is you smear over there with um, some kind of an old cement on one of the bricks on the outside, milabar. You, you smear the cement or your extra layer of cement, so therefore it's obvious whose side it is. And again, you do have facing outwards. So you want to have an Avon the same question, make it towards inside. Because if you make it inside, the other guy will come and put some cement on the outside. Well, but the DVD will say, he's claim, let's both. So, Hashtanami, now also, the couple Le Chavre, his friend will go ahead and peel off the cement. But will say, Didi, Vididayu. He'll say, it's mine and then yours. It's the same problem. And the Gemara, Kilufa, the only way to do it is by peeling it off. Made the, the you'll see it can never be really smooth. You'll see that it's, it's jagged, and you'll see that it's rough, and we'll know that he um, that there was originally cement there, and he took it off. What about you have these uh, you know these very wooden twigs, fences with palms in between them? What happens over there? Omar Nachman said, What you do is you take the top of the palm branches and you make it facing outwards. The same question before. Why don't you make it facing inwards? Because then your friend will go ahead, your friend, your neighbor, will go ahead and he will make it facing his direction. And the Amen will claim, both of us. He'll cut off. If you're going to make it facing outwards, he'll cut off those uh, the, those branches that are facing outwards. The Shudling, toss it away. And there goes your whole sign. The Amen will claim, with both of us. Sigma when you make it facing outwards, you also put cement on it. So therefore, um, you know, it'll it's, it's much stronger. So, so what? Hashanam is a chavre kol vle. He'll go and peel off the cement. When it says, Kilufa made the yidir. When you peel it off, you can tell because some will always be some residue. Abaya says, I think, no, Abaya says, Hutza Lesley Tekkanto. When it comes to Hutza, it's very difficult to maintain that sign that you made, El The only way to do it is do a proper star with witnesses to prove that this is what happened. There's a big argument by a chutzr. If one person, let's say the minig hamadina in the chutzr is to build uh, bricks, which is three twachim wide. But the person there wants, they want better security and better walls. Says, I want to build gauzes. I want to build, it's not the minig, but I want to do it. So I'll build it all on my side. 
how does he prove later on that the wall is his with the chazis? And the question is, does the chazis work in a chatzah? That many of say, yeah, just why should it be any different than a bika? But the other Shreem say, no, because in the, in the courtyard, because nobody can see what's going on, it's two private homes, and they, you know, there's a wall facing the so nobody can see inside. And if you have the wall that divides and intersects the entire chatzah, then the neighbor can go ahead, play around with the wall, cut it off, have plenty of time to do something there that you will, and you will never know. You, the other neighbor, you don't, you don't see what's going on in your, hut, in your friend's house. And obviously, he doesn't get on with you because he's about to, to, you know, to cheat you. And, uh, and and you lose out. So they say, by it comes to a chatzar, the only way is to have a star with Edim. Then the mission concludes. What happens if they both agree to build this wall of Vika when you don't have to? So then, you said, <coughs> they just build a wall. And they make a chatzar on both sides. So obviously, quite a don't have any chatzar. Don't make either chazis. So nobody has any proof that there is obviously belongs to both. I'm a chazis shame either because since we don't know in a suffix we divide it, or not that it's a suffix. That in itself indicates to us definitely it belongs to both. There's no question anymore because there's no sign in either side. <laughs> so why do you have to have a chazis on both sides? Says the Gemara. Um, Neither one should make the chazis. Amali um, said, Loi, no. See, we're talking about the Kodim Chad Menayev of the day. One of them went ahead and he built a wall. And um, he went ahead and built a wall. The E Loi, oh, that's the case we're talking about. You need to make a chazis. Since we're supposed to build the wall together, you would think that they have to um, you know, put the money down. They start building the wall. But one guy was so eager that he jumped in the head and he built the wall. You know, he's laid out the money. Now he's coming to the guy and claiming, give me back my money. You know, the half that you have to pay. So, and he made a chazaz already. So, if his friend doesn't make a chazaz himself, who the other guy will claim it's mine. So, we're worried about a cheater. Says the Gemara, this whole din in the Mishnah about putting a chazaz on both sides is only in a case where one of them built in, built the wall out first. And now we're worried that the other guy is going to be a, a cheater. If the mission is out to talk to us about cheaters. The mission is telling you how luck in normal circumstances. We're not talking about a case where one guy is a cheater. Omele said, What do you mean you're not talking about cases? Come on, Omele, what do you mean? And the first case is, is not a, um, when it says right before, the meaning is, let's say, not to have, um, and one guy wants to build a wall. If one guy wants to build a wall, we say, Go ahead and build it and put a chaz on the outside. What's the purpose of a chaz? To prevent the other guy from cheating. So, what's the difference? What is the difference between the first case where one guy built the wall or the second case where both guys built the wall? You're telling me when both guys build the wall and the reason why I make a chazaz is because we're scared one of them is going to cheat the other person. So, and you say, oh, we don't want to talk about cheaters. But we are talking about cheaters. Why do you think if a one guy built the wall, you put a chazaz? Because you want to avoid cheating. I mean, no, very different. In the beginning, he tells you the halach. What does it tell us how lucky that is that the minig is? If the minig is not to build a wall, you don't have to build a wall. And you cannot coerce the other person. And even though you are eager to build a wall, you cannot force the other person to build a wall. Um, and, and then once we establish this halacha, if you want to build a wall yourself, you can. Then we tell you, by the way, we want to give you advice. Have a chazan there. If you're turn to Kanta, tells you a way to make sure that you don't get cheated. El Asefa, but the end of the Mishnah, where Dina. Tony, Dick, Tony, what din is he telling you here? If both of us want to build a wall, there's no din here. <laughs> Go ahead, do whatever you want. You both agree. There's no din here. So why should we, will, will the mission just come out and tell you, okay, uh, this is what you do when you build a wall you're together. Um, let's avoid cheaters. We're not out here to tell you how to stop cheaters. That's uh, something you use common sense. Amr Rabin Rabin said, No, the mission does, is coming to teach you a halach. And that is that a chazes would work here. And why? We're talking about not, we're not talking about a brick wall. We're talking about a wall made out of twigs and these palms. And yet, will, will, uh, a chazes will work and not like a bayah that says that the only thing that works is a star. That's the halacha the Mishnah is trying to teach you. La fukim in the bayah, the says, Hutz of lesser the content, there's no other remedy, Ella Bishtara. Kamar Shalom is going to teach you the chazes sagi, chazes will work. Okay, we're up to the Mishnah that Dawid Ahmed Beis. Amak, and we actually had this Mishnah, just a quick introduction. We had this mission in Baba Kama, the Chaf Aleph, where we had a very interesting discussion 
And Rav Chizah told Rav Chama, you weren't, you weren't in yeshiva today and you missed out on a beautiful uh, discussion we had about the concept of zenen one person had benefit, but the other person had no loss. Do you have to pay or not? So we talked about a guy squatted in somebody's property. This squatter would have had to rent a premises to live in. So he's benefiting from living in this person's property gratis. And the owner had no intention of ever renting out this property. So he didn't really incur any loss. So then then of his What's the situation? And Rama Khama said, that's your whole discussion. Oh, it's a Mishnah here, Mishnah there. Anyway, so Yomara brings down the Mishnah over here in our case here to try to relate it back to that. So let's see. Mishnah said, are we on? The Dalit the Mishnah. Says the Mishnah. Hamakim is Chavein and So you have Reuben and Shimon. And there's a big argument in Yomara Baba Kama. Interesting, the argument is there, not here, when the Mishnah is right here. And the argument is what exactly happened there. According to Rashi and all the Rashi, we'll agree with Rashi learns. It's talking about that Ruvain has a property in the middle, and Shimon has a number of properties surrounding Ruvain. And, and Shimon is building a wall between Ruvain and himself. Shimon has four properties. He builds a wall to separate Ruvain's internal property from himself. He already has, according to those, all those are showing, according to most of those are showing him, he already has a wall on his perimeter between his four properties and the outside world to prevent you know, thieves or animals roaming about. But uh, he now is building a wall in between in the Ruve, the internal property himself, to separate them. Doesn't want Hezegria, doesn't want to have um, anything, anything to do with each other. That's one version. That's Tasis. Uh, sorry, that's Rashi. Tasis learns. We're not talking at all about a wall between the inner and the outer. We're talking about a wall between the outer and beyond. And whether he can ask the inner guy, look, I need you to participate in this big wall that I made. So Mishnah. So let's say if Shimon is surrounding Ruvain with three on three sides, with Goda, that's a shine of Lishis, and Ruvain and is now surrounded by three walls. Shimon went ahead and built three walls on the three sides. Excuse me, the three sides. Ruvain doesn't have to pay a penny. And why not? A couple of reasons. But main, one main reason is what benefit did Reuben have? Even if you want to learn that Zen and the other the fourth side is, is totally exposed. <laughs> so there's no benefit. So why should he pay? Now, even though we learned before that in the Bika, you cannot force any, sorry, three walls you don't have to. So it sounds clear from here. But what happened? You built a fourth wall. Then you would have to contribute. Seems clearly only three walls you don't have to. But for you, why would you have to fourth wall? Because now you're benefiting from the wall over there. And even though we learned before that in a, in a valley, you cannot force me to contribute to the wall. So Rashi, those are trying explain because the wall is between the wall. The purpose of this wall is not for Hezekiah. The purpose of this wall is to avoid, to prevent animals from coming in and and and, and ruining your crop or for, prevent another from coming in and stealing. What happened to the fourth side? So the Mishnah says three sides you don't have to pay. So by inference, but if the guy would have built a fourth side, then you have to contribute because you're benefiting and you're having Hamna. Uh -huh. What exactly you have to contribute, the Gemara will give you three different opinions, as we'll see in a minute. Rabbi Yaisi says he disagrees. He says, Im Omad, the God of the is, if he stood up and built a fourth side, Megal Glovico has to pay for everything. Now, what exactly is the argument between Rabbi Yeshi and Tanakama is a discussion of the Gemara? Because Tanakama also agrees if the fourth side was built, you have to pay. The Tanakama just says the first three sides, you don't. Rabbi Yeshi comes along and says that if you build the fourth side, you have to pay. So what exactly is the argument? And that's what the discussion of the Gemara will be here. Om Rabbi Yudin. Om Shmuel. First, Rabbi Yudin says the name of Shmuel, Halacha ke Rabbi Yeshi. The Halacha is like Rabbi Yeshi, that if you build it, you have to pay. And the, the stress is on the word hakol. What does exactly hakol mean? We'll see. But megalgin olav es hakol doesn't mean. I mean, one way of looking at it very simply: the Tanakama holds. Okay, you built the fourth wall. You only contribute to the fourth wall. The first three walls had no benefit. And Rabbi Yehi says, no, megalgin olav es hakol. You got to not only contribute to the fourth wall. You got to contribute to all four walls. That's one way of learning. But we'll soon see. The first another question comes up. Well, okay, the guy decides to build a very fancy wall. You don't, really, you don't really need a very fancy wall. You could have gotten away with um, uh, just a, a pale fence. Could have gotten away with anything. So when we say that you have to contribute, do you have to contribute with what the materials the guy actually used? Or do you have to contribute the bare minimum that would have would have achieved basically the same end? 
And we have and that in itself we have a machlek. Sending more. Only in Malok Rabbi Yishit Amar who said Im Amar the God of the God was a cup. Loishna. This is he says. I don't care if Amar Nikif Loishna Amar Makiv. It doesn't matter who built that fourth wall. If the Nikif, the person who's being surrounded by, built with walls, and obviously he demonstrated he's very happy, surely he has to pay this. But even if the Makif went ahead and built a fourth wall without asking you, and he built it, once you have that benefit, you have to you have to pay. And the Gemara there says, why do you have to pay? If it's then, then the Vizel Why do you have to pay? So if you learn like Tosis, the Gemara's question actually makes sense. You had to build the walls around the perimeter, outer perimeter to prevent people from the public coming in. So it's the guy, in the, meanwhile, the internal property has had no benefit from what you did. But you had to build that wall anyway. And the more answers there, there, because of you, the wall had to be longer than it should have been. If the middle property wouldn't have been there, then my fields would have been much it would have been contiguous to each other. And then the surrounding wall would have been much smaller. So therefore, it's zenene v'zechaser. I'm actually losing because of you. That's if you learn Taisa's way. If you learn Rashi's way, Rashi seems to be learning that it. We thought it's zenene v'zechaser. Why is zenene v'zechaser? Hard to understand. But the Gemara's answer, according to Rashi, is that that it's zenene v'zechaser. Why? Because the Gemara says ata garamti li hakefi said. What do you mean hakefi said? The entire wall between the middle fence, the middle property, and us is just because of you. It's not hekay for Yaseda. So we say it is because it's it's sort of a you first you built the outer walls and you want to protect yourself. So this is a continuation of what you build on the outside. And therefore, karamtali hekay for Yaseda because now I have to build internal walls because of you. But anyway, so you want to say like this. Eat what we learned. Rabbi says, Hakul of Himashigoda. You know what? You have to pay the exactly the price, the materials that was used. You pay the value of a cheap wall. I have to contribute, yes, but who said you have to build brick wall? And the, the crux of their argument is the Gemara that we had in um, in the end of Bob Matziah. If you go into somebody's property, you go in and you plant trees in someone else's property. Never ask. He never asked you, you never asked him, you just did it. What do you pay? So we said it depends. If it's a field that generally has these kind of trees, then he has to pay you the full price. But if it's a field that you don't normally plant these trees, and he might he can say, I was planted, I was I never planned to plant trees. I wanted to grow wheat. Then he has to pay whichever is the lesser amount, the expense or the benefit. And the argument between these two is how do we compare this case here? The guy built the wall when you don't really need a wall. And uh, as far as his agree is concerned, because the big with no meaning, and he went ahead and he built the wall. But on the other hand, it's keeping animals out. So do we treat this like a field that is meant to have trees and therefore it has to pay full expense? Or do we treat it like a field that is not really meant to have it and therefore he only pays the lesser amount? So the Gemara said, let's go now to our mission. And let's see who's right. If Rav Huna, who said you pay the full price materials or Chibana. You surround your friend on three sides. The God that I said is Shaina, and he 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 um he put a wall on the first, but the second, the third. Ain mechayven oisay. You don't have to contribute. So we can infer from that harder than these. But if you talk, we would have built a fourth wall. Then mechayven oisay. Then he would have to pay. Okay. Then ain mechayven. But Rabbi Yishei argues. And what did Rabbi Yishei say? Im Omar the God that said these. If he went and completed the fourth wall, mechayven you got to pay. So what's the argument there? Aren't they saying the same thing? Oh, so be explained by the Rabbi Huna. Rabbi Huna says you got to pay the full price. That in itself is the argument. The Omer Hakolifi Masha Goda, but you have to pay them for the price of the materials. I know the Ika Be Tanakamba Rabbi Yisrael. Now we understand exactly what they're arguing about. Tanakamba Sava. Remember, by, by Rabbi Yisrael using the words the Galgan all of his Hakol sounds like Rabbi Yisrael is stricter than the Tanakamba. So I'll say as far and the halacha is like Rabbi Yisrael. So obviously Rabbi Yisrael, whatever we're going to say has to be the final halacha. So the Tanakama holds Hakoil the feet to make Kani Bezor. The Kanakama holds you pay cheap to get away with the cheap, you know, the bare minimum wall. In Umashe God Aloy, but not exactly material. And Rabbi Yaisi says, Hakoil the feet Mashe God, you pay according to material. Fine. But Bhia Barab that says that the halach is you pay according to the cheap materials, so that would be Rabbi Yaisi. So what does the Tanakama hold? And the wording sounds like Rabbi Yaisi is being stricter than the Tanakama. So what can be less than that? You pay for cheap wall. It just reads. What could be less than that? The Tanakama has to be more lenient. 
If you're not going to pay for the cheapest kind of wool, which is what Rabbi Yaisi is saying, according to Chibarav, then my Kiyoyle, what will he give him? Well, that's not a question. He can say, I don't need a wall at all. What, we're trying to prevent animals from coming in. I would hire a guard, a security guard, up every night, much cheaper. Tanakama holds, I don't even have to pay you for a bare minimum wall. I can say, I'm happy to have a guard there. And that's a Tanakama. And Rabbi says, no, that's one version. And now the Gemara will give a number of answers, but all of these answers are in Chiyabarab, not in Rav Huna. Rav Hunne would hold pretty straightforward, as we'll see in tomorrow's Gemara. So Iboy is saying another way of understanding the argument of Tanakama and Rabbi Yaisi. And you know, Rav Hunne already explained. Tanakama holds, according to Rav Hunne, Tanakama holds, you pay cheap four walls, and Rabbi Yaisi there, you pay the more expensive four walls, whatever he used, and it's pretty straightforward. But now we're explaining according to Chibara, another version. Iboy is saying, Rishayna Shni Vishlis Ikim and I know the difference is, do you have to pay for the first three walls? The Tanakhama says if the first three walls, you don't have to pay. But if you build the fourth wall, you have to pay. But you know what you pay for? Only the fourth wall. And Rabbi Yehi says, no, Megalgin Olov Zakur, you pay for all four walls. Now, what's the logic? Why would the Tanakhama say you only pay for one wall? <laughs> the benefit of the fourth wall is only because you collude the other three walls as well. So Rashi says, there's a concept called, there's no appeal in Halach, in, in a Bez, Kom Dina, Hada Dina. Because the Bezdin once made a ruling, do they? We have a council called Zilusa de Beidina. We're very worried about the prestige of a Bezdin that you have to go ahead and review a case. I mean, we do have a council of appeals, but not in a normal a normal case. So, so according to Rashi, it's as if the three walls have been ruled that you, that you don't have to pay. And that's called Komdina. That's how the Balamar's words. And, and Rashi doesn't use those words, but that's what the Balamar says. And then when it comes to the fourth wall, that's now you want to huddle did you want to reopen the case regarding the first three walls? It's over. We've already ruled that you don't have to pay. So you only pay for the fourth wall. That's an ashi. But Shaykh and Rabbi Yaisi disagrees. And according to the Ramban and others, the, the, the shot is that with the first three walls, it's as if the person was merciful you. Since he built one wall at a time, and um, it's as if he said, you know what, don't worry about it. And once you merchel, you don't, uh, you can't go back, you can't retract. So therefore, you don't have to pay. For the first three walls, you only pay for the fourth. Okay, that's version number two. Version number three. Rabbi Yaisi saw when he showed the shulchan amiyav. He buys them. And third version. Makif v'nikif ikibah. Does it matter who actually completed that fourth wall? Tanakama holds time of the nikif. You know when the Tanakama says that you have to pay for the other walls only if the person who benefited from it, the inner property. He goes ahead and he builds the fourth wall. Then we say, ah, you showed us you're happy. Pay for the three walls as well. The Megal of Zakral, you pay for other walls as well. Avol, Omad Makif, ain't you nice the maid of his. Contra Tanakamba, if the Makif stood up, then all he has to pay is for the fourth wall, not for the first three. And why not? What's the difference? Because we say Zenene, Vizela Chaser, you are part of. But if you went ahead and you built the fourth wall, you have just demonstrated that you're happy to actually pay money. Now, in the case of squatting, all I showed was I enjoy your, your property, but I'm not planning to pay any money. So therefore, you don't pay. Over here, the fact that you expended money, you yourself spent money and built the fourth wall, then we say, ah, you're happy to pay money for it. Pay for the other three walls as well. But if the market did it, then the only benefit you had is from the fourth wall because the other three you finished, you don't pay. Abiyasi says, Abiyasi says that if the market, uh, when Abiyasi, the market, even if the market did it, now that you're benefiting from it, and it's Zechosa, because you had to build the extra wall, you have to pay for all four walls. Fourth way. Now, not all Rishonim have the fourth version, because here we swap everything around. That in fact, your Tanakam is stricter than Abiyasi. Lishna the final version is, Makiv and Nikiv, 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 the Tanakama, so the Tanakama holds im goda makif eserviis nami yov. The Tanakama holds, I don't care who completed the fourth wall, you have to pay. And Rabbi Yehi says, no, only im ama nikif. Rabbi Yehi actually is the more lenient one. Only if the nikif stood up, the goda eserviis, and he built the fourth wall, who the yoyv lay, then he has to pay. The goli died this way. He showed us he's happy. Avlim goda makif lo yoyv lay midi, but the makif made the fourth fence. Then you don't have to pay anything at all. Now, 
this lush and many Rishayim don't agree with at all because the next story in the Gemara you learn tomorrow, it's the Makif who made the fourth wall and Rava will rule at Rabbi Yisri that you have to pay for it all. And yet the Gemara right here said that if the Makif did it, you don't pay anything. So either they don't have this version of the Gemara at all, at all or this whole Gemara is only following Chiyah Barab. But we Paschal like Rav Huna, who said that you pay for the full materials, that none of these differences are right. The only argument to Tanakam Rabbi Yisri is how much money do you pay for a, the material, the wall that he built, or for the cheapest possible one? Anyway, Shavuot, everybody. Good work. Good work.